ah, that's the noise that triggers me more than anything. More what than Pete Dawson. Uh, I go. I'm just trying uh, to fix uh, there, actually. <laughs> I, I want to. I, yeah. I always want to do it, but I don't because I'm too nice. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, who's about to go at long last on his holiday to Japan. I am. Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. I got my plastic legs. I'm going to go on holiday. It's my song about going on holiday. I want to get out of here. Plastic now. legs. Get me out of here. <laughs> get me out of here. So you're going with your plastic silicon legs. My plastic silicon legs. This is serious. He serious stuff. Pete is a walking tattoo, mm -hmm. and he's worried about going in the hot springs slash mm -hmm. public bath. It's 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 the one thing people uh, email us about every single week on the show. They so, want to know what the rules are about tattoos. Yeah. Just get yourself some silicon legs. That's my plan. So it just wraps over your leg. It's yeah. just like it rolls over your yeah, leg. Yeah, it's disgusting. What about the top half of your body? I don't have any tattoos on the top half of my body. They're all on your legs. They're all on my legs. Why have you done that then? Because uh, back in the day, it was the only muscular part of my body. I mean, that's still very much the well, case. But I was like, yeah, yeah, right. you could arm wrestle. These pythons. Oh my goodness, sweaty, <laughs> sweaty. <laughs> I once had my um, armpits laser. Did you know that? Wait, what? What? <laughs> oh my! What is that? It's a little uh, little thing that you know everyone always finds quite interesting. Um, part, uh, part, part around the water fountain with Pete Donaldson. The yeah. new series coming with mildly that's, interesting That's what stories. I used to call my armpits, the water <laughs> fountains. Um, yeah, I used to like sweat like for no good reason. I used to get up and I used to be absolutely sweating like a pig. And this is the height of summer, so like, it's still <laughs> pretty bad. Just but a dodgy lymph node, but instead people yeah, decided just, just to obliterate his sweat gland. You, you, got, you, can, you can get like um, uh, injections, you know, like the lip injections that, that, that lasses get. Um, right. What's it called? Uh, botulism. You get botulism put in there. Um, but then... <laughs> you mean but, fillers? Yeah. Fi I know it's... Yeah, fillers, fillers are just... Fillers are... Um, it's botulism, isn't it? It's, um, I think you're getting... You're thinking of uh, the other one. Oh, right. Is that not what you put... Oh, you put silicon in there. Oh, don't you? you put Lord. silicon in the lips. Thank God you're not a fucking plastic surgeon. Silicon well, in the lips. just put some botulism in your face. I know you do that for, uh, like, cheeks and things like yeah, that. Yeah, but what is the name of that? Botulism <sighs> that you put in your face. But... Uh, but Botch. It's got botch in it, hasn't it? Botox. Botox. Yes. Botox. Bo um. So you can do that in your pits to kill the um the 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 the, the cells that are releasing all this. What would happen? God damn. What would happen if you had botulism Botox in your lips? It would just shrink. Because botulism, it? It, it the Botox, it shrinks the muscle. It stops it. It just it just inoperates the muscle. Right. So that's, that's why what, people have it in their face. I think, is that true or is it just there's just too much real estate on Chris, the, in the derma, Dr. In the derma Chris, place? Uh, Dr. Chris right. has spoken. But botulism is like the, botulism is the incredibly poisonous mm. and dangerous. You die awfully. It's but interesting they that they use like microscopic bits to mm. basically kill off your muscle and it works, I think, for like six months. Well, the um, well, anyway, that that got put into my pits, and it worked for like five years. So, wow. if you ever, if you have hyperdryosis, I believe it's called. Right. Um, I heartily recommend it. Though, um, they they basically inject you with um, uh, lidocaine to numb the area. Oh, and then not they... another word. Fuck you know. Oh, I tell you what, it's not botulism. I'm talking actually shit. You can get botulism oh. in there, but that only lasts for like a few months. What I got was lasers. I got laser um, uh, surgery, well, basically. Stop on it. bragging. And so, and so it, they inject you. She must have injected me like twenty-five times in the same pit, and then she fucking Ooh. hits hits the old uh, hits the old all cells right, with a right. laser. I'm gonna have lunch after this. I don't want to hear about you getting <laughs> your arm stabbed to pieces. God's yeah. sake! It's, uh, I tell you what, um, viscerally, and and your arms do sort of like go up like a like a gibbon's throat pouch, um, and it's it's really um, really weird. You're like that for ages because it's just filled with fluid. Mm. Because your pits are gone. What are you doing? Um, and it's just recovering. Oh. And it, and it and it, and it, but it stops you um, sweating for ages. So if you do have that issue, well, I highly recommend getting your pits oh lasered. God. Well, at least when you go. Are there any sponsors left <laughs> no. after this? They've all gone. They're, They're not all coming gone. back. Never mind. But all right, just the laser people. You will be in good stead when you go to Japan. It's very mm. hot still. It's like thirty degrees. Yeah. Stupid humidity. Mm. No sweat for you. Good, well, good job. <laughs> well, I've, 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 I I did it very simple. I've started to turn into a proper dad. I bought 20 identical T-shirts, Fruit of the Loom T-shirts from Amazon. Well, how are you going to fit those in your one... Again, if you missed the last episode, mm. two episodes ago, Pete's mm. going to Japan mm. with just one rucksack between him just and his partner. Just one rucksack. It's gonna, which is look, mental. It, it, if, 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 if I was a YouTuber, I'd be getting three videos out of this. How to pack <laughs> for Japan. 
What? Don't <laughs> forget this. Don't forget that. I've, I've even brought a little sat nav for when I'm in the. Uh, I'm in the like why a sat nav holder. Why have you got so many the... obscure <laughs> items in your bloody rucksack? You got like silicon legs. You got mm. a GPS. steam deck. Silicon legs and a steam a steam deck. Steam. You don't need a steam deck. Silicon legs. Steam. It's gonna be steamy out there. Just watch a film Just on the plane. Why don't you take the luggage. copy of the Born in Japan book? Read I that could do instead. that. Put it on the Kindle. Buy it twice. Yeah, mm. well, audio book yeah. available soon, October fifth. But like, <laughs> demands in schedule. <laughs> I've, uh, while you're having a whale of a time mm. rolling around in some sweatless shirts. Sweatless shirts. In Tokyo. I've got a dash up Where's the Where's that guy come from? I've got a dash you're up so the sweatless. <laughs> You've got to go up to Leeds. I've got to go up to Leeds and Nottingham and sign 200, 400 books. Listen, a friend was asking whether I was uh, going up, but um, no. I can't. I'm in Japan. But um, uh, have you been to Leeds before? Mm. Because it's not guaranteed, no. you Southerners, whether you've made it north of... I've been to Nottingham before. It's sold out. Uh, mm. 200 people in Leeds are going to turn up bang and it. meet me Absolutely and be it. disappointed. Uh, it's, yeah, it's cool. But my family are from Leeds, actually, part of them. But I don't know right. what goes on there. You what don't what know goes, what goes on, on there? I don't know. Excitement. Whenever we've done a live show there, um, the football fans are boisterous. <laughs> <laughs> Does that help? Probably I, not. Yeah. I find people yeah. up there more friendly, mm. but also more quickly to turn to violence. It's <laughs> North England, isn't it? Yeah. Sweeping nice, generalizations about half Beautiful the Beautiful town. Quite hilly, if I remember rightly. But I've got the, you know, while you're off on holiday, I've also allotted for the first time in a year right. at least four days of holiday time. Yes. But you, I don't know where been, to go. You've been sneaking off here and there, but you've only ever been taking like two and a half days off. I went to Norway for a few days and saw Depeche Mode. Mm. And uh, you're still helping out on the YouTube channel as well, the, the, the podcast YouTube channel. So, like, um, yeah. you've not really had some time where you're not doing anything. No, I like, really, really need a few days of, like, nothing. Um, mm. And I don't know where to go, somewhere in Europe. Mm. Uh, kind of like the idea of just sort of waking up and being like, going to Gatwick or Heathrow Airport and being like, there, that plane, I want that one. And then just hopping on it and going can somewhere. I, can I recommend Serbia? No. I, to... <laughs> I ah. want a more relaxing holiday. I'm not saying Serbia. I, some Serbia is lovely. But I want somewhere a bit more... Boring and, right. and you know, float down the Danube for a bit. Yeah, and where, do you know anywhere I can sit on a beach and just do sod all? I don't, you know, I don't really like these holidays where you just sort of sit on a beach and do nothing. But as you get older, you deserve it, yeah. and you do, you just know, get you get on a flight or Malaga, Malaga, There's some lovely little resorts uh, in Malaga, Malaga, Spain, mm, eh? Malaga. Yeah, actually, mm. I'm looking at Malaga mm. and Iceland, mm. two very different coins. <laughs> but I suspect Iceland it'd be like I can't relax. I'm in a car driving around, and I don't want a car. I don't want to go to Italy where I always have to drive and no, like, end I mean, up in a car I've, crash. I've been to Iceland twice, never had a car. It's the, just, just hang around Reykjavik. There'll be loads of people that know who you are, though, because oh. you know, uh, this popular, well, this I'm certainly, is quite uh, popular up there. Certainly not going to Sweden, then. Right. It's not that. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> where all the podcast <laughs> listeners are. I got spoiled only once in Norway. <clears throat> not many Norwegian <clears throat> listeners, obvious. But, mm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking towards Spain. Italy's nice, but I always end up in a car crash, so I don't want to <laughs> go there. How, long's, how big is your sample size on that one? My sample one, what? Your sample size, like how many how many um, times you've been to Italy versus how many times you've had a car crash? Mm, it's been about five six times. Right, had one one mm. car crash. Okay, but that's enough to make you. That's it. That's a high, not, it's still a high one. percentage. It's, it's a twenty percent now. Well, yeah, you, you don't want to have more car crashes. Yeah, but I do like Italy. It's very nice. So yeah, I don't know. I got to think of something. Mm. Got to wing it. But Why don't you go still... somewhere weird like um, the Faroe Islands? What goes on in the Faroe? Islands? I know they're nice. They're, yeah. they're kind of <laughs> they're like nice in I between know Norway nice. and the UK, right? Yeah, well, yeah. You've so been there? North of Scotland. No, I've not. Oh. I, I always wanted to go because we always play them in, in England internationals. We always play Faroe Islands for some reason. But we never we don't really regard it as being a front. We don't regard it as being that close. But right. of course it's that close. I mean, it's, there's nothing there. It's riggers and, 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 and people who fish, I guess. Fish. But, uh, but um, yeah, it's, it looks really beautiful. I don't know if I want to be as bold as that. Well, this, right. is, this shit's uh, Serbia and the Faroe Islands. Mm. Going on holiday and sitting by a pool and doing nothing mm. for five days. Okay. I feel like neither of those places fit that description very well. All right, go to bloody Doha. <laughs> Doha, a, Doha so sit hot. Sit in a hotel. I'm not going to <laughs> Qatar. I know. Open to your suggestions, guys. All Let right. me know where I can yeah. go on a reasonably priced holiday for four days. Write him in the, write him in the like and subscribe and write it in the comments, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're yeah. getting good at this YouTube game, yeah. Pete. Getting very good indeed. We've got a story this week. Write it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a story this week from James from Pennsylvania. Ooh. Hello, Celestial Chris and provocative Pete. He certainly is. My name is James and I'm a dude from the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. I've been catching up on the podcast over the past couple of months and have finally caught up on the current episodes. I have a short story about a Japanese exchange student who went to my high school for a year for the sake of privacy. I think I cocked that up in the audio. I think it was privacy. Privacy? privacy. <laughs> it is privacy audio. Yeah, yeah, stupid audio mm. book. Uh, for the sake of their 
privacy. Available now. Privacy. I'll refer to them <laughs> as Takeshi. Takeshi came to our school in my sophomore year of high school. We were a small private school with only about 80 and 90 students, 80 to 90 students per class. But we always had quite a few exchange students from all over the world for some reason. There were kids from Russia, Latvia, Thailand, and of course, Japan. Oh. Takeshi was a very athletic student. He was popular at school. He didn't speak the best English, but he was able to get his points across most of the time. A bit like Pete Donaldson. Mm. We got along well. Use your words, Pete. We got, <laughs> we got along well and had several classes together. However, when Takeshi would see me, he would do something quite strange that I still question to this very day. The moment he saw me, whether it be in class, the hallway, or even the bathroom, he would come up, rub my earlobes in his fingers, and say, Whoa, very nice. <laughs> I could tell there was no ill intent behind it, just due to his kind smile and the thumbs up, the thumbs up he would give me. Huh. But it was no doubt confusing. I still have no idea why he would do this, but maybe they just like earlobes in Japan. <laughs> what do you guys make of this? I appreciate the podcast, and I'm working my way through. Keep up the excellent, work, excellent work, guys. <laughs> James, the earlobe man. Yeah, I think either James has great earlobes, or we finally found the earlobe murderer. Yeah, I would say um, that no one has the right to touch you, but <laughs> there's no actually there's no but. Um, <laughs> don't touch the butt. Um, uh, you, you know, you, you have a right to be untouched, but um, I stop saying the word. Touch. Don't know why he's doing that. I think you should try this in London. <laughs> to, uh, oh, waffle, very yeah. nice. You'd be very killed. nice. You'd earlobes. be murdered. Yeah, um, but I mean, by all means, James, do send us a picture of your earlobes, um, and I will decide whether they're horny or not. I think. I think the fact James didn't sort of say, "Oh, my earlobes are special," right? Would indicate that mm, uh, Takeshi nice. is, is just into stuff, just a bit just weird, into stuff. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, James, I mean, it'd be nice to find out whether he was doing that to everyone else, or just you, James. I mean, that is that again, sample size. I need sample size, James. I'm genuinely, I need genuinely, genuinely believe I'm going to switch on the Japanese TV and be like, "The earlobe killer has <laughs> been found at last <laughs> after ten years." With his catchphrase, "Very nice, very nice." <laughs> very nice. Eight victims were found around Tokyo mm. with the earlobes removed mm. and the word very nice stamped on their forehead. <laughs> well, we finally found him. No, yeah. I don't know. That's He's not normal. That's not no, good. That's, that's, not a, that's creepy. That's not a jipper. Yeah, that's the thing, though, isn't it? Like, there's a lot of stuff that goes on when you're on holiday and they go, Is that an Italian thing? <laughs> and they go, No, he's just an absolute C word. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the, the only time I've been touched in Japan like that is they touched my stomach when I was fat. Oh, for like, toy. Oh, Chris, Sam. Is it for toy or for tori? For toy. For toy. Or debu is more, debu, debu. the more sort of colloquial. Fashion. Debu sounds a bit like debu. Debu. Yeah, debu. Debu, yeah, Chris. Nice. Okay. Um, and they would touch my stomach and sort of pat it and be like, oh, Chris, Sam, you <laughs> like food now. And I'd be like, can you not touch my stomach? Yeah, my, my, my mate, um, Al, uh, Alex N, um, uh, a mm. UK television uh, presenter and favorite. host of the excellent uh, film podcast, Clash of the Titles, with Stack. Um, he was he was dressed as the crow <laughs> when we were in uh, Tokyo. I was dressed in, as Minnie Mouse and he was dressed as Naturally. the crow. And, Wait, what's the uh, crow? What's that? You know, like Brandon Lee... Bruce Lee's son. He died on the. Oh. Um, he died on the set. Right. Yeah. yeah filming yeah. it. Um, I thought you meant like the crow from the Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds. No, no. <laughs> a more, a more recent a, sexy when it, crow. When is a bird yeah. of the kill people? Very good. That's better <laughs> but, than but that. But he'd but he'd sort of taped himself up. But um, you know, when you tape yourself up, it's a bit like um taping a, a, a lamb shank or something and it's going to be bits sort of sort of bulbously kind of like oh sort of sticking God. out uh and pretty much everyone in every bar <laughs> who went to would would point at the <laughs> at the bleb coming out and going oh, oh hoo, 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 fatty oh dear well, and that... he's whip thin as well that's the funniest thing he's a he's a he's, he's a, a very tall. young man mm. Um, yeah, so there you go, James. I think just a very odd individual. And I've never yeah. heard of the earlobe thing in Japan ever. So no. it's not even like a, a cultural thing the Japanese yeah. love to do. It's yeah. just a I just very don't touch other people and they don't want to be touched. That's uh, <laughs> words to live by on the Boy <laughs> Japan podcast I think this so. week. Yeah. We got a story this week about guns and Hokkaido. Phyllis yes. and Mr. Dawson. Um, uh, very much like we were saying earlier about, you know, going to Italy and going, is this just an Italian thing? Uh, is this just a US thing? This feels more US y to me. Um, a police officer left his loaded handgun uh, in a convenience store in Ashikawa City uh, uh, on Monday, Hokkaido professional police, police said uh, mm. on Tuesday. Uh, a sergeant in his 20s uh, was heading to work in plain clothes uh, when he used the convenience store's toy toilet uh, on Monday uh, and he <laughs> removed his gun holster and left it hanging on a coat hook when he left the store. Um, after noticing that his firearm was l missing about 35 minutes later. Oh my God. 
I mean, that's a long time oh, for I a forgot. gun just to be floating oh, around. I forgot my loaded gun. There's enough chance for someone to go in at that point and go, ah. I, just, I, I, I don't think maybe like um, American people and, and so I guess ones who, who have states that allow um, kind of open carry and mm. stuff and certainly, you know, police who, who walk mm. around with guns. Um, it's never not absolutely chilling to see someone with a gun. Like it is never being from Britain and we don't see him very often. We see him at the airport sometimes. Yeah. Um, and that's it really. And mm. they all the only like there are guns in every police station but they're all in banned safes they're always in a safe yeah. and there's not that many of them and you know they're all kind of tied up with SWAT guys anyway um but uh, yeah in the US like you go to like a 711 and the security guard's just got a gun and it's like yeah. That's horrible to see. It's really upsetting. <laughs> and it's British. a testament to how lovely uh, the US people are, that they're so welcoming, because uh, mm. a lot of them are armed all the time. Um, yeah, but this uh, but this, this, this sergeant in his 20s uh, was heading to work in play clothes, and he, uh, yeah, he just left his gun behind. And no bullets were missing. He rang up the, uh, he rang up the store and said... Uh, <laughs> I forgot um, my gun. I've forgotten. Uh, could you uh, not let anyone in the toilet, please? I've done a dirty shit and I don't want anyone to smell it. Um, the uh, staff reportedly told the police they were unaware that the holster contained a handgun. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, apparently you're not allowed to take them off. Internal oh, uh, regulations specify oh, that officers may not disgun at any point. Um, and the police spokesman said... Just sorry about that. <laughs> I think the, the most sorry unbelievable that, part of this story is just a gun in Japan. Like I mm. don't think I've ever really seen a police officer with holding a firearm no. in 10 years. Could have done with a few when Abe was down, day. Eh? Well, yeah. Mm. That would have been a great day to have a yeah. gun when yeah. Shinzo Abe got plugged mm. in. But like, yeah, the only weapon I've seen has with, with the, uh, the pole. Well, the they have like pole, yeah, yeah, yeah. A pole with a, yeah. uh, a sort of C shape on the edge, down, and you yeah. have to prod and push people. I do think that would work. It's just like a, it's just like a, 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 a more, uh, a more solid taser, isn't it? Really? I feel Solution. like in a fight of gun versus pole. Oh yeah, I mean, gun if you're would fighting probably gun. win unless he forgot it at the Seven Eleven. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot it. Or he pulls out a coolish <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> ah, nuts! <laughs> it's so cold. Some some uh, chicken, some fried chicken. <laughs> ah, nuts! But again, another another slow week for Japanese news. Yeah, <laughs> a gun in. Have you, uh, my my dad when he worked on a boat, he was a um a, 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 a naval officer with a gun, petty, petty officer. Um, I don't think so. I think he was trained oh. on them, but I don't think he, he he had one. Um, but he um once left the blueprints of a oh, something like a, like a billion dollar um nuclear sub. On, oh my god! Uh, on on behind a toilet. <laughs> what the? Fu- <laughs> How did you do that? Um, nobody found out about it. He ran back and found oh, it, but it's similar similar vibes. Like, I mean, if, you know, I mean, height of the Cold War as well. Jesus. <laughs> like, and dad just leaving um, plans for a nuclear to be honest, sub. I, you know, I know if I was working in that sort of situation, I'd be the same. Yeah. Like, oh, I left the uh, the plans for the Trident nuclear missiles and uh, by the McMuffin. Can I can I have it back? Right. We just oh, this the secrets. We the, pressed the button. We, we, the nuclear football has been activated, and a McMuffin <laughs> fell out the top of the warhead. The UK's ah. nuclear secrets being dispersed among, amongst McDonald's <laughs> around the country. Yeah, it would be. Would you, if you were in charge of the maintenance of a nuclear warhead, I would do that. Yeah. Would you, in a sh- with a sharpie, just write your name on it? What? <laughs> like you would, wouldn't you? Like you just would, Chris. Yeah. Pete Donaldson, <laughs> take that, Russia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a shame they'll never see the writing coming. <laughs> uh, we'll be back to the moment, guys. With your stories, comments, and questions in the fax machine. Wow. And we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners, Mr. Donaldson? Oh, baby, I love you, we. Lucas has got a touch. Uh, hello, Chris and Pete. I'm from the Czech Republic. Um, isn't it called Czechia now? The Czech Republic. I thought it got rebranded. Oh, it's Czech Republic. I'm sure it got rebranded. Chechnya is a region no, not in Russia. Chechnya, Chechia. That's, just, that's just inconvenient. That is Why would you do that? Correct. Uh, and I would like to move to Sapporo. Do you think it's a good choice of city? I've been researching a lot of things about Japan, language, culture, etc. for the past seven years, and it seems like the right choice, but I'd love to hear your opinion, Lucas. You're a big fan of Sapporo. You're a, I mean, it's a, big, it's a big, sprawling city that gets very cold in winter. And it's near Asahi Car, where you can find guns just lying around 7-Eleven. Exactly. Free earlier. guns. Free guns, baby. I love Sapporo. Yes, mm. it's cold and horrible in winter, mm. but it's also cool. And also, most of the shot, most of the, uh, the city's got like a, a secret basement level beneath mm. all the ground. Because Natsuki and I, when we, were, we, were, we went to Sapporo first time in winter, we were like, where the bloody hell is everyone? What's <laughs> going on? We thought it was just empty. Mm. And then there's, the whole city's like underground. Right, like, yeah. There's a nuclear war with Pete Donaldson's mm. dad's secrets being leaked out. 
Sapporo will be fine because when the warhead hits, everyone will be underground. I went oh. to a uh, nuclear bunker at the weekend. Oh my god! On a ghost hunt. What the? F- where was this? Uh, it was in um, uh, I can't remember the name of the bunker, but it was in Essex somewhere, um, and it was yes. Kelverden Hatch, I believe it was called. How big was the bunker? Uh, pretty huge. Um, not as big as I thought it was going to be. Not as deep as I thought it was going to be, but it's pretty sprawling. <laughs> the it's world's like shit. Every si- every sort of room was just like a scene out of Oppenheimer. Old sort of computer terminals, um, like uh, just all that shit. It was amazing. <laughs> was it like big maps showing where the you know uh, if a bomb goes off, how oh how many people would be killed and stuff? It was uh, a it riot. Was pretty, it's pretty uh, pretty strong stuff. But go there, Lucas. Go there, Lucas. Yeah, like, go. <laughs> Have you thought about not living in Sapporo, where the food is great and the air is clear and it's just a really nice place to be and everyone's very friendly? Uh, you could move to Kelverden near Brentwood in Essex <laughs> and go to the nuclear bunker for a bit. I would vote to Sapporo. Yeah, yeah. Sapporo's great. Do it, yeah. honestly. It is. Everyone I know who's lived there yeah. has loved it. Crabs yeah. as big as your fucking head. They are big. <laughs> Spider crab. <Ooh. laughs> uh, we got one from Musa, who says, Hello, Crunchy Chris and Panko Pete. After four years uh-huh. of dreaming, Followed by three years of waiting. My friends and I are finally heading to Japan this September. Oh, I heard that the Japanese are not so fond of travellers blocking the train with their giant suitcases. Yeah. Be Pete Donaldson, take mm. a rucksack only. But do we even have an alternative? We mm. start and end the trip in Tokyo. Does it make sense to get a locker there to store some stuff? Love your work. <laughs> Best greetings from Germany, Musa. No, uh, the, no, just take mm. it. Yeah, they do get a bit annoyed on the train. People are kind of... It's weird. They don't. People on trains in Japan don't aren't overly sympathetic to people with suitcases. I don't yeah. know why. Mm. Um, but they're never going to be like angry or punchy. Mm. They'll go. You're never going to hear about it. They might go do a bit of tutting. Yeah, they'll go. <sighs> people oh. over fifty do that a lot. There. Oh, that oh, person's going somewhere. Uh, I remember I in got, the world's busiest metropolitan district. I simply uh. simply got off a train last month in Tokyo and sort of had to move past someone who mm. went. <sighs> Right. You hear that a lot, right? And that—that's uh, the noise that triggers me more than any, more <laughs> than Pete Dawson. Uh, I go. I'm just trying uh, to get somewhere, actually. <laughs> I, I want to. I, really? I always want to do it, but I don't because I'm too nice. Rub their ears. <laughs> Rub their earlobes. Oh, very nice. And throw a, <laughs> and throw a suitcase. Very nice. But honestly, take your suitcase. Mm. Lockers. You only kind of use them for one day. You can use mm. them for several days, but yeah. leave them at a hotel. Put them in a locker. But for the I, most part, keep them with you. I once. Um, did a uh, did, when I was on radio money, uh, I would uh, keep a hotel room in um, a cheap hotel room in, in yeah. Japan and just keep all my stuff there. Yeah, fuck off idea. to Osaka or or um, fuck or whatever, then get back. Um, and most of my stuff would still be there. And I just take a few things to, yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah. And um, uh, but um, something had gone wrong with the toilet. Oh, and so shit. it had sort of what had gone in had come back here into the space um, without me knowing and um, <laughs> it's just made everything stink of poopies <laughs> it oh was absolutely God. disgusting charming um, yeah but it, but it was hard to sort of like so what's I, the moral of the story here don't just make sure you do, make sure you close you, the bathroom just door just be careful of Japan's dodgy plumbing yeah I, I guess so yeah that's, that's brilliant not helpful the Sakura <laughs> the Sakura uh, Sakura te? no yes yeah. Sakura, Sakura, Sakura te? I think that was the ho- that was the hotel we stayed in. Soccer team. in uh, Shibuya. It's a nice one. It's good. Oh. It's a nice little uh, cheeky little um, sort of boutique hotel. With a pricey. With a cafe in there. Pricey in Shibuya. Mm. Big money, Donaldson. Mm. We've got one last question from Brian from New Jersey. He says, "Hello, correspondent Chris, in person of letters, Pete. Do the voice. Greetings from Southern New Jersey. That's not it. Uh, Southern New Jersey, boy." Long time listener, <laughs> first brilliant. time emailer. I'm a big fan of the travel and life abroad YouTube videos like yours. Who would you say are the abroad in Japan equivalents for other countries on YouTube? Oh. And where else are you planning to visit? Who's the Korean Chris Broad? There is no Korean. There's, there's, no there's Korean the Chris Broad. the Korean Englishman. Right, it's quite a big is one. Good. I not really my cup of tea. Right, quite normal. Quite normal. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. What's? Uh... I hmm. actually don't know. No. Mm. I watch a lot of Rick Steves. He's in Rick Steves. He's Rick Steves. Oh, you he haven't lived. He's I've like probably this seen him. American dude. He just travels around Europe going, Hi, I'm Rick Steves. Today we're going to look at Austria. Oh. I'm he's, gonna... married, he's married to Anne Steves. All the Steves. All the Steves. And he's just like this really well mannered, nice, smiley, happy guy. He's and from he's, ba- just... he's from Barstow in California. It's very now, kind if of. I came from Barstow. I'd be trying to get as far away from Bastor. <laughs> I'm not even going to apologise to the people from Bastor. I've been there. It's frightening. It's it's like a really, it's kind of like a, a almost like a Christian travel show. 
Right. It's very again. polite. Right. He's like, we'll meet the locals. And he like goes to Manchester. I'm going to expose him. And like, all, like, all, like, uh, <laughs> like all the others. <laughs> They he's always, they always, they always have a da- dark side that it's, you don't hear about. It, it's like, uh, 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 what's it? PBS, like public, right? Okay, yeah. Sort of got, mm. got that, um, but it's all on YouTube. You just watch yeah. Rick Steves wandering around the country. He's like, we'll meet the locals. Fun. And just, there's always just a shot of him sitting with some locals, having like a really mundane conversation. <laughs> uh, I love him, Rick Steves. Check it Rick out, Rick Steves. But he's not me. He's and not you. He'll he's never the only be you. Other, he's the only other travel YouTuber I watch. Right, travel filmmaker guy. I watch loads of them. Your suggestions. I ain't got a fucking. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes. Sorry, yes. Brian. You've asked the wrong guys on this one. I really have, yeah. But yeah. have a fantastic time. Don't look at my algorithm. The problem <sighs> is, I've got so many YouTube bloody channels these days. Wrestle me abroad in Japan. I've got me on. Right? They're man. just I, all, my algorithms are all. I, and sometimes if I'm logged in on the uh, Wrestle Me one and I click on something, I'm like, I don't want people knowing I've clicked on that. And everyone else who edits the show <laughs> and looks after the channel will see what I've been looking at. I'm a bit worried that you're. Looking, overlooking, and in charge of this YouTube channel. Back Good point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's problem, right? Yeah, yeah. We're stuffed. Mm, That's great. Yeah. But regardless, have a fantastic time in Japan <laughs> for the first time in three and a half years, right? So yeah, that's it. Wild. He's going. I'm going. It's happening. I'm gone. See you later. Yeah. Suitcase not in hand. Just one yeah. sole rucksack. Gochi so samadeshta. Take a few photos. <laughs> share them online. Yeah. Or share them on YouTube. But yeah, have a great time, man. Um, sorry, I can't be there. That's what happens when you book a holiday when I'm not there. That's what happens when you organise a book reading when I'm not there. But we might let you into the Born Japan studio. Yeah. I'll have to let someone let you in. Yeah, I'm going to leave the toilet. <laughs> oh, God. Flood the toilet. Stop ruining <laughs> toilets. Everything smell like Have bone. a great time in Japan. And yeah. Um, now you're, yeah, you're definitely not coming to the studio now. <laughs> Keep the stories, questions coming into Born Japan podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back later in the week, guys, to all over again. But for now, wish Pete Dawson a great holiday in the comments. They don't have to do that. Do it. They don't wish have to do that. Holiday. And Please if you're in don't. Japan in September, just sit in Bar Rockaholic and just wait for him to don't come in. tell them. Shibuya, Bar Rockaholic. Shibuya, Bar Rockaholic. Sit there. Yeah, yeah. He'll be there. I'll be there if, propping it up, listening to new metal. I think if you're going to... The odds of running into him the most are probably Shibuya. So <laughs> yeah. keep an eye out. Yeah. Let's walk All around right. circles. All right. But for now, guys, keep the stories, questions coming, blah, blah, blah. Have a great few days. We'll see you right back happy here. Happy with that, are you? Happy on... with that exit, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm never happy. I need more no. coffee. Let's see you later, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.